Ninja Babes, are you ready? Last week was part one of our gender bias episode, and we talked with Mary Leighton about women in leadership who have faced role incongruity, gender bias, um, women in the workplace in general. We started to get into ninjas <laughs> and women and girls competing in ninja, and some of the questions we face about should males and females compete on separate courses? Should we continue on the same course? What does that look like for the trajectory of our sport? So we're going to get into part two today. So I highly encourage you, if you have not yet listened to part one, please go back and listen. Everything I just explained about gender bias, role incongruity, if you're unfamiliar with those things or you don't understand how it relates to Ninja, I would definitely encourage you to go back and listen. It really sets a framework for what we're going to talk about today. So I have been getting amazing DMs and emails from so many of you, and I so appreciate it. I love hearing your opinion and also your perspective and what experience you have had. Um, And so it's been so valuable to me. So please, again, I will say, email me information. If you're finding other articles that you think are pertinent to this conversation, if you want to be part of the larger conversation on the podcast or you know someone else who is in leadership, whether in Ninja or in the world of sports in general, who might be a good voice to talk to you, definitely send them my way. You can email me at theninjababes at gmail.com. In a later episode after today is really when we're going to go over all this feedback and if there are other questions or information, different things like that that come in that are not part of this episode, we will be talking about it in a later episode. So if you had emailed me or DM'd me this past week and then you're listening today and you're like, she didn't say anything about it, that's because it's, <laughs> it's going to be in the next episode. All right. Are you ready? Let's get into it. It's interesting because people listening even right now might say, well, if you look at our track record, yeah, guys usually do do better than women on on the course. What say you, Mary? Oh, what say I? Oh, Kara, that's a huge can of worms. Okay, so on the topic of women not doing as well on the course as men, I want to make a point about Ninja and how it is different than other sports. So in Ninja, girls run with the boys, and that's kind of the way that it's always been. And if you look at other sports, um, other organized sports, the boys and girls are almost immediately separated. There might be some co-play up until, you know, first or second grade or something along those lines, maybe even a little bit further. But for the most part, you're seeing boys play with boys and girls play with girls. And it's always been that way. And that is just you know, further cementing that idea that girls don't belong with the boys, that girls aren't going to be able to play with the boys, the boys shouldn't play with the girls, or whatever way you want to look at it. It's basically just continuing to message that girls are inferior, right? And so separate courses for men and women, you know, that's kind of, you know, the the bush that we're beating around here, but let's just dive right into it. I personally don't think that we should separate courses for men and women, um, even at the adult level. And here's why. Uh, b- before I go into my explanation, I, I just want to say, you know, I competed in the first UNX major. And as an athlete, personally, I was excited that it was a separate course because I was thinking about, you know, my performance and and how I wanted to make a good showing. And I was like, hey, maybe I'm not going to just get to the fourth obstacle and then get smacked in the face with a, you know, insane upper body circuit that will be easy for the guys, but hard for the girls, you know? So I do understand that perspective. I I understand the perspective of wanting to do well and wanting to be in an environment where, you know, you can succeed and show off your hard work. But I think that the sport of ninja is too new. I think it's really too early for us to say that women can't be as strong as the men because the reality of it is the adult female division right now is made up of a generation, you know, you, me, and and the other female athletes who have had to overcome the stereotypes of women being strong, who have had to overcome the barriers and the boundaries around building strength. And we've never, we haven't had a lifetime of believing it was possible. We haven't. I mean, I didn't think I could do a pull up until three years ago. Right. So I haven't been training my whole life to be the next American Ninja Warrior. Right. I've only been training for the past five years or for some people, 10 years. But if we separate the courses now, what we're messaging to the generation of female ninjas is you're as good as the boys until you hit puberty. 
That's really what we're saying. We're saying that, you know, you can run with the boys while you are young, but as soon as you hit puberty, as soon as you become a woman or you're starting to become a woman, that's when you're not as strong as the boys. And that's such a limiting thought. That is such a... it's so limiting. It's a limiting belief that that we're going to be sending to these young girls. And I don't think, I, I think we owe them more than that. We have never seen what a generation of girls are capable of who have been brought up in an environment where they're welcome, where they're being told that they are capable, where they're given the opportunity to, to show that they're capable. We really don't know what these girls are capable of or what they're going to be able to accomplish if we let them grow up believing I'm going to compete with the boys for however long that goes. You know, I'm going to compete with the boys when I'm six. I'm going to compete with the boys when I'm nine and 10, when I'm in the preteens, when I'm in the teens, and I'm going to compete with the boys when we're in the adult league. And I really think that we owe it to the next generation to to keep the courses together so that they can grow up believing this is this is what I can train for and I'm capable of this. I really want to see what they can do. And this this hits on a, a point that's really important to me is that voices in the ninja community and influences in the ninja community, this is such a new sport. It is five years, you know, Ninja Warrior, the show has been around for a while, but as far as it being a sport, you know, with competitions, you know, we're hitting season six of the NNL. It's, it's very new. And the decisions that we make now about the direction of our sport are really going to shape what the sport is as a whole. We have such a unique opportunity here to really craft a sport that's different than everything else. And um, we can't just think about the decisions we're making in the now. So right now, for my generation, it would be great to have separate courses. But what does that decision mean for girls 10 years from now, right? What's the impact of that choice of setting that precedent 10 years in the future? We, we got to be thinking about that. I think that's so huge. And, you know, back when I did the UNX episode with Jesse Graff and Jess LeBrec, we talked about this very thing. And we both, if you think about it, okay, I'm 30. They're both older. Or no, Jess LeBrec is about my age, but uh, Jesse Graff is older than I am. And they, like you just said, were kind of of this, LeBrec was very much of the mindset of like, why not try it? Like separating, I want to hit a buzzer. Like I want to do a course that's challenging, but I'm able to accomplish it much like so many of the guys. It's challenging, but they can accomplish it. Like we, our generation, I think, like you said, has worked so hard to overcome so much. And this is where we're at right now. And it's good and it's commendable. And there's so much good stuff that we're doing. But I think some of us in that generation have felt like if we're only talking about right now, maybe separate courses wouldn't be such a bad idea. Figuring out this like weird concept of separate but equal sounds kind of bad, but like the concept of it's a separate course, but it's like equal challenging, equal, you know, showcasing our strength, that sort of a thing. And so I remember when we made that episode, it was kind of like earth shattering to hear us talk about such things because it's always been together. But at the same time, I I totally understood her point. Um, and UNX went with it, you know, but to hear you put it that way with making a decision like that might only be focusing on our right now. It might not be thinking so much about the future of the sport and that point of, you know, these girls in a Jr. and who are in UNX and NNL now, young, growing up, like you said, learning that I can do pull-ups, I should be doing pull-ups, I can do pull-ups from a young age all the way through middle school, high school into adulthood yeah, they're going to be capable of so much more. And not just the mindset. The mindset's huge, but also just the physical capabilities that they'll have. Like think about girls who are gymnasts from a young age. You know, we look at them in Ninja and we're like, oh, they have so much body control and it's so great. And like when you're learning Ninja as an adult, it's harder to achieve that as quickly. But it's the same concept. Like if we're setting them up for success from a young age, both physically and mentally, it's like we don't even know what the outcome could be because we've never seen it yet. And that's mind blowing. So when you think about it that way, it's like, why would we change it now when we're just on the cusp of realizing what the potential could be? I just thought of this even further than that. Like, how amazing would it be if all of us, men and women in the ninja sport, were part of this totally groundbreaking sport? that not only changes gender bias, it like changes how women see themselves. It changes everything about sports. Like we could have such a strong and amazing ripple effect into the rest of the sports world, not just 
for people who are on TV on A and W. I think sometimes like people in general society watch A and W and they're like, wow, I can't believe you know those women did that. But but yet we're on TV. It still kind of feels like oh, they're a special class of women. Like they're the exception. They're not like the normal. But if we are able to continue to allow ninja to grow into a sport that's widely accepted and you know is is all over, then we can bring those same values into the the general sport and not allow it to only be the exception. That makes me so excited. <laughs> oh man, that's why I love this sport so much. It's just because there's so much potential within it. You know, I think about my girls at the gym, and you know, this is kind of a, an appeal to coaches too. And and I know other female coaches have this thought and and even some male coaches too, but, you know, I see my girls at the gym and I see how hard they work. And I see that right now, like they're keeping up with the boys. I, I don't want to do anything that is going to make them believe that as they get older, they're not going to still be able to keep up with the boys. Like who, who would even want to do that? Who would want to say to any of their girls that go to their gym, when you hit 16, or when you hit 13 or whatever the case may be, you're not good enough anymore. That's, oh, we can't do that. No, I mean, you're right. We yeah. can't do that. We don't want to do that. And I do want to applaud and like, you know, mention there's so many amazing dude coaches out there and gym owners and people who have seen us as equals and, you know, supported Ninja Babes, supported, you know, us as a women's community in general and said like, yeah, we want you here. And it's fun to train together. I, I like I said, like I, I can't speak for everyone, but I personally have never felt like I'm I don't belong, even if it's all guys in the training circle. I've I've never felt like I don't belong. Yeah, I actually when I I just did a little blurb about this on my Instagram page a little bit ago, but I was talking about confidence and you know confidence again. That's something that females typically aren't expected to have a ton of, and. Um, in all of my groups of guy friends when I was growing up, I was always kind of the butt of the joke. Like I was always getting made fun of and, you know, it stayed consistent. Didn't matter if it was my school guy friends or my work guy friends or camp guy friends or church guy friends. Like I was always being made fun of. And I just thought it was like maybe I was just easy to make fun of because I had a lot of personality quirks. I wasn't really sure. But I was talking to a good friend of mine and uh, they said, you know, you know, they're kind of beating you down probably be just because you're really confident, like you're you're almost overconfident. And it kind of broke my heart because I was like, you know, it's it's hard enough for girls in this world to be confident anyway without worrying about their group of guy friends being threatened by the fact that they have so much confidence. Um, but my point in telling this story is when I went to the ninja gym and when I went to the OCR gym, I formed this new group of guy friends. And it's the first group of friends that I have had that I've never felt like I couldn't be super confident. I've never felt like they wanted to tear me down. And that's just, again, something so unique about the sport that I just absolutely love. Absolutely. It also, while, while you're talking, I just keep thinking like, then why ninja babes? Like, why do we even have ninja babes if like, we're supposed to be equal? Why do we have a special group? <laughs> but it's like, it's the concept of, we're here for one another because we have been looked down upon or we have been felt these bi- like we've felt these biases we've experienced these biases and we're here to support one another and come together and realize how to educate ourselves how to change our own mindsets and realize we don't have to be limited by these things but also to continue to grow our friendship to continue to to grow our sport and encourage women to stay in our sport to be a part of it and to realize like this is a safe place and we do have like girls training nights and those things just because it's fun (laughs) and because sometimes like there are different ways to coach I do think that there are sometimes differences in coaching girls and boys but I think sometimes that comes from these biases and girls needing to unlearn those things and feel comfortable with their own strength yeah why else do you feel like it's important to have ninja babes well that that just hits on a ton of points you know asking the question why ninja babes and the, the community piece of it it absolutely is important because we need to learn from each other. We need to learn from each other's experiences and learn how to react. One of my points in my capstone was that I had just gone through an entire degree program about leadership and nobody had ever told me that I was going to face the challenges of gender stereotypes and gender bias. We talked about avoiding bias, like making sure that as a leader, I was not biased toward any one particular people group. 
But nobody ever said, oh, by the way, because you're a female, these are some of the challenges that you're going to face. And here's how you can find support. Here's how you can overcome them. Right now, there still are unique challenges for women in sports. And so like having the Ninja Babes community, that's definitely something that is super, super valuable. And role models is, is a huge thing as well. I mean, to your point about role models and whatnot, I do think being able to help girls, like you said, navigate what they're experiencing. I, like when I've had A&W Junior Girls on the podcast before, several of them have said that boys at school made fun of them because they didn't complete the course or because they were just like, I don't know, just like weird stuff that I was like, really? You were on the show. Like, what do they want from you? And so, you know, these young girls who are so proud of what they've accomplished and within the ninja world, they're celebrated and they're supported. But then kind of to your point of being made fun of for your confidence, it's like girls who are doing something great and then boys still have needed to find a reason to find faults in it. Um, and so I think part of Ninja Babe's goal is to support the female community in general, no matter what age you are, but for those young girls to help them help lead them when they find those biases or, um, you know, they feel like they're being put down for something that they thought was so good and all these things like how do you navigate that and how do you understand it? That's an awesome point. And it kind of relates back to imposter syndrome, right? So girls can be, you know, super celebrated in the ninja community. I don't think that that's really an issue that, that we face with celebrating girls and their accomplishments. But like you said, going back to real life where they're in school all the time and they're still being hit on every side with these like people coming at them negatively. The bias that I think that ninjas experience or female ninjas experience, it's not so much anyone saying you can't be strong or you can't be a ninja. It's more so people saying like it's not normal. Like, it's not normal for you to be this strong. Like, it's weird. Or like, oh, you're still a girl. Those sorts of things. And that's where, you know, the role models really comes in. Because the more that people see strong women, the more that people see that, you know, someone's training a couple, like, four or five days a week and they're really going after their goals, the more normal it becomes. And the more it becomes normal to the girl that is seeing it too. And the more that a girl can perceive that what she's doing is normal and acceptable and not weird, the less likely those negative voices are going to have an impact on her. So that's another place where I think Ninja Babes is just so important because we do often celebrate like super fun training videos and just like really awesome things that our girls are doing in the community. So yeah, post your stuff, everybody. Post your stuff. That's my my message to all the female ninjas out there is uh, post those training videos because that's actually something that's super, super, it's, it's just going to be really great to help reduce a lot of the bias because the more people see women being strong, the more people see girls going after the goals, the less off-putting it becomes because they've seen it. There's actually something else related to my capstone that talked about how when a female leader takes over a team, her followers are going to be very biased towards her. But over time, that bias is reduced as they continue to see her operating in that role and operating in that role effectively. So, you know, showing the world what we're capable of, it's not bragging. It's not only going for the likes or only trying to get attention. Like showing the world what you're capable of as a ninja, as a strong athlete that is actually doing a world of good to help reduce the bias toward female athletes. So post your stuff, everybody. Absolutely. And along with that, we always, you know, kids and adults, we always talk about posting your fails as well. But I think it's important for other girls and women who see us doing ninja and doing these incredible things and being strong, who might still feel like, oh, but somehow they're special and somehow they got there. Like, that's not me. I think being able to post fails and even post progressions over time, like comparisons of your first pull up to now your your attempt where you've gotten 15 or 20, you know, being able to show the progressions I think is so valuable and valuable for our female community because it shows what our own hard work can do, what our own mindset shifts can do, the results that they can bring. And I, it would be a shame for girls to just think that us ninjas are a special breed that it's like you if you don't have it then you can't do it you know what i mean yeah in sports uh 
they they talk a lot about motivation. Like, and this is kind of going back to girls quitting sports, you know, when they hit high school. When you lose motivation for something, there's three main killers of motivation, and it's comparison, expectation, and perfectionism. And so, you know, Fail Friday is, is amazing. Posting your fails is fantastic because it reduces that expectation of perfectionism, right? I don't really think perfectionism is a thing in the ninja community, which is, again, why it's a really special sport because that motivation killer that might cause someone to quit is is gone because no one's expecting you to be perfect. We're expecting you to fail. We want you to fail because we know that failure is where the best learning happens and, you know, some of the best lessons as well. Expectations, you know, that's really on coaches and parents, but I think all of the coaches that I know and and all of the parents that I've talked to for my kids at the gym, you know, that's that's not really a huge thing. I think there's a lot of value that's placed on the sport from parents and a lot of value that's placed on the sport from coaches um, because of the lessons that it teaches kids. And comparison, I mean, I'll just say it, that's where Ninja Babes comes in with uh, those wonderful uh, mindset teachings that you have, Kara. But, you know, it is something we need to talk about. It's something we need to continue to support each other in and reminding ourselves that Sure, I can look at another female athlete and think, wow, like I'm not where she is, but it can't be a negative thing. It can't be a, I'm never going to get where she is. It's a time for me to look and say like, okay, like what does she have in her training plan that I could do that could help me get to that point? Or like, let me celebrate the fact that she has worked so hard and she has made so much progress. Like it can't be a negative thing. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, there's so much we could talk about mindset stuff, Um, but that's where those ninja babes workshops have come in and, you know, in the past they've been in person, but um, just having those workshops where you're able to really talk through different struggles, like comparison, how do you use it in a positive way, like you're just saying, or even course strategy, how do you really see yourself succeeding and be able to actually then see it happening in real time, not just in your own mind. But quarantine has been good to me in the sense that I actually was able to put together a lot of online mindset teaching. Um, And so I do actually have a new monthly membership available. It's a strength to strength mindset programming where basically every month you receive content that is teaching you a very specific mindset strength. Um, And then there's a Zoom group call that's like some additional teaching and you can do more discussion and have Q&A with me and the others who are part of the monthly group. But if you head to the ninjababes.com, you can find that there. But it's like, you know, this is my heart with Ninja Babes is wanting to bring us together to show each other our strength and then to continue to build our mental fortitude and break these stereotypes and help us not just follow and perpetuate in the same patterns as past generations. I would love to do a study. Um, This may end up being my doctoral thesis. We'll see. But I would love to just follow the sport of Ninja as it continues to evolve to see if there's you know, evidence that it's not following the similar trajectory of other sports. So particularly the dropout rate, I think that would be something that would be really interesting to analyze. You could take the data from Ninja Works or from Ninja Master and and look at like who's competing, who's competed in which events and kind of like do a comparison of that over time and see like, okay, are we seeing a huge amount of girls drop out of the sport in the high school age? And if so, like why, you know, because, you know, Ninja just doesn't have a lot of the factors that really influence that. So I'd love to dive more into that. Yeah, that is so interesting. And Mary Leighton, you could be like our first true ninja, like reporter, (laughs) research, studier person. (laughs) Um, But that's so, so interesting to think about. And this is a whole nother topic, but obviously I feel like everyone knows my secondary topic is like injury prevention. (laughs) But it's like, uh, I wonder if there is a difference between rate of injury between women and men and possibly because if women have never challenged themselves in that sort of upper body training and now they are, is their rate of injury higher because of like a less foundational strength to begin with? I don't know. It's just the thought. That's a totally different topic. Um, (laughs) But that's something I've thought about as well. That's that's so interesting. Mm -hmm. I'm very intrigued now. So many interesting topics. (laughs) So many points. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, just a sec. It's summer. Warmer months are here. Do you have a refreshing drink to keep you hydrated during your workouts? Blending up some Propello Life amino acids with ice before a workout is the perfect way to hydrate. It's what I've been doing in these warmer days and I love it. It's the best way to fuel up before getting into a sweaty summer workout. Then after I've worked hard and need to refuel for optimal gains, I drink Propello Life Protein. 
It's non-GMO, tastes great in chocolate or vanilla, and it's whey is from grass-fed cows with no additives or chemicals. I know I'm getting great nutrition and refueling the way that my body needs. Ninja Babes, Propello Life has the drinks for you. And best of all, you can use code NINJABABES, all caps, for 10% off your order, free shipping, and it's a way to support the Ninja Babes podcast. So go ahead and see all the way and vegan options for pre-workout, energy, amino acids, and protein at propellolife.com. The link is in the show notes. And before we kind of like segue from from talking about our ninja beloved sport, we had talked before about A and W and how they've always given us that opportunity to compete on the same course. And I feel that when we think about ninja announcers, Akbar and Matt have always been so cool to us. I feel like they've never had that monotone announcer voice when it comes to the girls. I feel like they've always been so pumped for us and equally excited. Like never showing favoritism, I feel like, in genders at all. They've always just been like, you crushed it. Like, this is amazing. I have to give them, if, if I could right now, you're, you're absolutely right. Because when I was reading that information about how sometimes like sports announcers are monotone when they're talking about females, like they were the first people I thought of. And I was like, they're never bored. Like, they're always excited. If I could, I would give them a fist bump with a glove on that has been sanitized and I'd still be wearing a mask, but like I would do it. <laughs> I think um, when I think about A&W, I always think back to hearing Akbar screaming, like, uh, you know, for my run, being like, Ninja, babe, do behave. <laughs> like, <laughs> it's just so funny. I love it. So kind of to end us off here and, and look back out into a, a general scope, um, going back to the corporate world, what do you think has been done to eliminate bias or where do you see yourself a- as your role to help eliminate bias. I feel that, to, b- before I let you take over, I feel that you have a huge role in the ninja world to help eliminate bias just because of even what your research has been. I'm so excited that we've been able to do these episodes because I think you can help to continue to educate and perhaps even work with NNL, work with UNX, work with different entities to help us as a whole community learn how to eliminate gender bias. Oh, thank you, Kara. <laughs> I see great things for you. <laughs> <laughs> um, honestly, that, you know, that would be my dream. That that would be an absolute uh, joy of mine if I could continue like working on this stuff and continue making the world a better place for the next generation of females and even a better place for, you know, the current generation of females. Kind of jumping back into the corporate world, one thing that was really kind of unfortunate in my study was the realization and the unfortunate confirmation via data that unconscious bias training, which is corporate America's response to all sorts of bias. You know, there's not just gender bias, there's racial bias, there's um, bias towards people of certain um, sexual orientations as well. And unconscious bias training is what a lot of companies are doing to try to address that. But the unfortunate reality of unconscious bias training is that it doesn't really have a lot of benefits unless the individual attending the training is willing to change. Um, Because unconscious bias training, it's all about asking yourself, like, where am I biased? And then once you realize what that bias is, you have to ask yourself, okay, what type of behaviors am I doing that are, you know, biased? And and how do I change those? And behavioral change for people, you know, it doesn't happen in a one-hour training. It it really just doesn't. And again, if that motivation isn't there, um, it's it's just not going to happen. So there's a lot to be said for structural changes within organizations to um, try to, in a way, engineer out the opportunity for bias. So one thing that some companies are doing is gender-blind resume screening um, so that when a recruiter is looking at a resume, they're not thinking this woman hasn't fulfilled her potential or this man has so much potential. Um, You know, they're thinking, okay, this is a great candidate. And they're not even thinking about whether or not it's a man or a woman. But yeah, changing the way people think, I think that educating the next generation is really going to be the biggest way we can make an effective change in regards to any kinds of bias, because there are just some really ingrained ways of thinking in the current generation that's in the workforce. And I think that once we start to see that next generation rising up and, you know, filling in the workforce, filling in our athletic endeavors, you know, filling in the adult ranks of the ninja community, That's where we're going to see the turnaround in that bias, because if we have taught the next generation that, you know, there's the differences aren't 
aren't that big of a deal, you know, that women don't have to be communal, that men don't have to be agentic, that you don't have to look a certain way in order to do a good job, that your race does not determine what your life path is going to be. The next generation needs to understand that. I think we're already already in a positive direction with this next generation. I've seen a lot of really active and passionate young people like on my Instagram feed and just having conversations with, you know, some of my kids at the gym. I am so hopeful and I am so excited. But I do still think that, you know, our current generation, we do play a part in that, whether that is protecting the integrity of ninja as a sport and and what we want it to look like for the next generation of female athletes, for the next generation of just athletes in general. And also just, you know, to make sure we keep talking about issues that's facing our world like right now. Like the issue of race. And it's a really divisive issue right now. Are we talking about that with the next generation? Are we educating them? Are we asking ourselves if we're educating the right way? That's also a really important piece of it too. So that's my spiel. I couldn't agree more. I absolutely agree. And I think this is how we can do our part within our own community. But I think the effects of it, the effects of not passing on bias in general, like maybe Right now, we've been talking a lot about gender bias, but like you said, race, any kind of bias or discrimination that you could hold when we learn how to recognize it and then on purpose not pass it down, it, it's going to have such a huge effect. And so I think everything we're talking about today is so important. And I think that we have an opportunity to make such a great difference for the generations to come. Yeet. yippee <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Mary, it's been so great having you on the Ninja Babes podcast today. I just love having you in our community. I think that you have so much wisdom and I'm so grateful for all of your research and sharing that with us in these past two episodes. It's been incredible. Um, Where can people find more of you or if they have follow-up questions or even if entities from the Ninja world want to reach out to do any sort of education, partnership, or idea collaboration, where can they reach you? Oh, I'd be so excited. So down for that. Um, Love getting messages from people. So my Instagram handle is Ms. underscore Renoir, M-S underscore Renoir. That's R-E-N-O-I-R. You can find me on Facebook. um, And also you can email me at Mary.Layton. That's L-E-I-G-H-T-O-N-2-5 at gmail.com. I'd love to talk with anybody and everybody about all this stuff. Yes. We will also link to those Um, in the show notes, the description show notes for this episode. We talked about so much, but there's really so much more to talk about. (laughs) Thank you for listening today. Please share this episode with leaders in the ninja community. Share it with your dude coach who you feel like needs to hear this conversation or share it with your gym owner, share it with, you know, different leaders within the ninja world, because together we are the ninja warrior community and we will affect how this community grows and changes and transforms. And we want to know that we are keeping the integrity of all of the things that we love about this sport. The fact that we are different, our, how our community supports one another. We want to see these things continue. So as our sport continues to grow and to change, we need to voice our concerns, our ideas, our opinions in order to really see our sport continue to grow in the way that we value and the way that we want to see it grow. Thank you so much for listening today. And seriously, again, email me with any other concerns, questions, articles, ideas, um, anyone else that you feel like would be good to be on the podcast talking about this topic, send them my way. You can email me at the ninja babes at gmail.com. And share this episode, share it with a friend, a fellow gym owner, a coach, people in leadership in the Ninja Warrior community. Let's keep this conversation going. Thanks for listening, Ninja Babes. Be strong, be you, be a Ninja Babe.